Welcome to I Can Read Vietnamese the Discussion Series. Today we'll talk about tone mark placement. Vietnamese is a tonal language, and the tones are denoted by tone marks when written. The question is, if we have a base word like this and a tone mark like that, do we put the tone mark here or there or there or elsewhere? Today we will talk about the symmetry approach. The symmetry approach is very simple. Only two rules. The first rule, place the tone mark on the variation vowel with diacritic mark. There are six vowels in Vietnamese that already comes with diacritic marks. If you see such a vowel, place the tone mark there. Basically, gather the marks together. If you don't have such a vowel, or if you have multiple of them, only then the second rule applies. Place the tone mark on the vowel closest to the center of the ram. Sometimes the center of the ram falls in a space between two vowels. In that case, you would have two vowels equally distanced from the center of the ram, and they're closest to the center of the ram too. So what do you do? You just choose the first one. Because we read from left to right, the first one refers to the one to the left. And that's all there is to it. Um, the video can stop right here. However, so many people are still confused, and thus I'd like to expand the discussion to include the review of key concepts. We will revisit the rules of the tone mark placement again, this time with practice, a few more discussion topics, and last but not least, a very brief touch on the other rules of tone mark placement. I will put the chapter tapping in the video description below. Let's review some key concepts. Vietnamese have so many diacritic marks, but not all of them are tone marks. The three marks that are not tone marks are the brief, the circumflex, and the attached hook. When you see these marks, they are part of the vowels, they are not tone marks. There are six primary vowels in Vietnamese. The letter A has two variations, A has one, O has two, and U has one variation. Totally, we have six variation vowels with either the head or the whisker. These are the ones that take precedence in the rules of tone mark placement. Note that the letter I and the letter Y in Vietnamese are primary vowels with no variation. Therefore, even though the letter I has the dot, and the dot is technically um, a diacritic mark, it does not take any precedence in the rules of tone mark placement. Only the ones with either the head or the whisker. So which marks are tone marks then? We have six tones in Vietnamese, five of which require tone marks. We can think of the marks as going up, going down, vertical wiggle, horizontal wiggle, and a drop dead dot. How do we put these tone marks in a word? The tone mark is put on the ram, or to be exact, on the, on the vowel of the ram. The rules will help us to decipher which ram to put the tone mark on. So that brings up the next valid question. Where is the ram? A typical Vietnamese word has a starting consonant, which is the onset, the ram, and the tone. The onset can be missing. Let's take a look at an example. In this word, toan, the starting consonant is the onset. Once you identify the onset, everything else that follows it is the ram, and the tone mark is placed on the ram. In this next example, you can see that there are two consonants to start the word. Both consonants belong to the onset. Once you identify the onset, the rest of it is to round and the tone is placed on the round. The two consonants, such as this case, is what we refer to as a compound consonant. There are so many compound consonants in Vietnamese, but most of them are easy to spot because they are combinations of consonants. Two cases that are challenging in Vietnamese, the compound consonant qua and Z. These two compound consonants are challenging because they consist of one consonant 
in one vowel. When the compound consonant consists of one consonant and one vowel, the vowel also belongs to the onset because it is a part of the compound consonant. So these are the two compound consonants that you have to remember or to memorize in Vietnamese. Whenever you see Q and U together, it is the compound consonant qua, and the U belongs to the onset, even though it is a vowel. Similarly, whenever you see G and I together, it is the compound consonant Z, and the letter I belongs to the onset because it is part of a compound consonant, even though the letter I is itself a vowel. Let's talk about the first case, compound consonant qua. In Vietnamese, the letter Q never stands alone. It always comes with the letter U for the compound consonant qua. So whenever you see Q and U together, it is always the case of compound consonant qua. Let's look at one example. Quý, Q and U together, compound consonant qua. That means the letter U belongs to the onset. It is its part of the compound consonant leaving the ram only the letter Y, and therefore the letter Y will bear the tone mark. Let's compare this word with a previous um, example that we've just seen a few minutes ago. In these two cases, the pair UY is present. But in the second case, because the letter U is not preceded by the letter Q, it belongs to the ram. It is not part of any compound consonant. So you can see that in the first case, the tone mark is placed on the letter Y, and in the second case, the tone mark is placed on the letter U, because the U is now part of the RAM. Similar to QU, whenever you see G and I together, it is always, always the case of compound consonant Z. Let's look at one example. Zo, G and I together, compound consonant Z, and therefore the letter I belongs to the onset, even though it is a vowel, leaving only the letter O as the ram, and therefore the letter O bears the tone mark. Let's look at another example. Za, G and I together, both of them belong to the onset, leaving the letter A as the ram, and thus the letter A um, bears the tone mark. Let's compare this word with another word, which also contains IA. In this second example, because the letter I is not preceded by the letter G, it is now not part of any compound consonant, and thus it belongs to the RAM. And because it belongs to the RAM, the letter I now can bear the tone mark. So now let's discuss um, some complications with the compound consonant GI. Unlike the letter Q, which never stands alone in Vietnamese, the letter G does stand alone. Because the letter G does stand alone in Vietnamese for the sound G is in goat, if you have a base word like this, how do you know if it is the combinations of compound consonant Z and A or the combination of G is in go toward ram ear. I can tell you right now that the second case is not um, a possibility in Vietnamese, and I can explain. In many Western languages, the letter G has two sounds G is in goat and J is in ginger, gene gymnastics. Very often, the letter G assumes the sound J when it precedes I, E, or Y. To ensure that the letter G has only one sound, G is a goat in Vietnamese, the letter G is not to be combined with any ram starting with I, Y, E, or its variation. So what do you do if you have to combine the sound G is a goat with any of these rams? In such cases, the silent H is called for. With the silent H, now it can be combined with RAM starting with I, Y, E of its variation. And I can give you a few examples in Vietnamese here. So back to our example. 
The second case cannot be correct because the silent age is not there. The letter G is not to be combined with Z, with Ram starting with the letter I. The root of the silent age is very important because it helped us to ensure that whenever you see G and I together, it is always, always the case of compound consonant Z. So now comes the next question. What about the combination of compound consonant Z and ram e? That's an excellent question because when you combine these two components, you will get GIA as well. Let's talk about that. In Vietnamese, there is a convention. When the, the compound consonant Z is combined with a ram starting with the letter I, one letter I is omitted. Let's look at one example. Compound consonant Z is the onset, ram in. When you combine those, you got two letter I's. But by convention, one letter I is omitted. I can give you a few examples in Vietnamese here. Zin, zin, ziu. In these cases, you don't see two, um, two letter I's, only one. But in the context of tone mark placement, these cases shouldn't present any problem or difficulty because these words do contain one vowel with the head, and that is where the tone mark is placed. However, there are three cases in Vietnamese where there is no such vowel with a um, diacritic mark to help you guide where the tone mark should be placed. The first case is Z. Compound consonant Z combined with ram E. By convention, one I is dropped. The second case is very similar. Compound consonant Z combined with ram E to form the word zin. By convention, no double I, only one I is placed. The third case is the word Z, combining compound consonant Z with ram e to form the word Z. Because of the double I convention, one letter I is omitted. Now you have two vowels, but then the ram is e. The rule of tone mark placement applies. The tone mark has to be placed on the vowel closest to the center of the ram. And in this case, because the center of the ram is in the space between two vowels, you choose the first vowel, which is the one to the left. So I hope I'm clear. In these three examples, the letter I does bear the tone mark because it acts both as part of the onset and part of the ram. So now back to our example. Whenever you see GIA, how do you know if it is the word za or the word zia, which is the second case? And the answer is no, just by the look at it, we don't know. You have to use the context to know which word is which. However, the word zia doesn't exist in Vietnamese. It's not a meaningful word. And so, um, whenever you see GIA with no tone mark, it is, um, to this date, always the word ZA, which is the first case. Now, if we'd like to put a tone mark on the word, in this case, um, the tone is NANG. If you mean to say ZA with RAM A, then you have to put the tone mark on the letter A, because it is one letter left. For the ram. But if you mean to say Z with ram ear, now you have two vowels in the ram and you have to put um, the tone mark on the first one. That is the first one closest to the center of the ram. And now if you look at these two words, you can see that the tone mark is placed um, on different positions. And that would be the, the clue for us to read it properly. In the first case, when you see the mark is on the letter A, we read it as ZA. In the second case, you can see that the tone mark is placed on the letter I, which makes the letter I part of the RAM, and therefore you have to pronounce it 
as zir. In my opinion, zir is the toughest word when it comes to tone mark placement in Vietnamese. But fortunately for us, um, it is a very uncommon word. Only no northerners use this word, and it's only a subordinate word to emphasize the word zat in the phrase zat zir. Even though it is a very uncommon word, because it exists um, in the Vietnamese vocabulary, we should still ought to know how to place tone mark placement when we encounter the word. Let's revisit the rules of tone mark placement, and this time with some practice. The rules according to the symmetry approach are very simple. First rule, place the tone mark on the variation vowel with diacritic mark. And those are the six vowels, six variation vowels with either a head or a whisker. If you don't have such a vowel, or if you have multiple of them, only then the second rule applies. Place the tone mark on the vowel closest to the center of the ram. Let's summarize the rules in two um, critical principles. Rule number one, vowel with diacritic mark. Rule number two, vowel at the center of the ram. Let's practice together. This is the base word, and this is the tone mark. The first questions we should ask ourselves, do we have a vowel with a head or a whisker? Yes, we do. That is where the tone mark should be placed. This is the second example. Always ask ourselves the first question. Is there any vowel with head or whisker? Yes, there are two, not one, because there are two. Now the second rule applied, we have to find the ram. There it is, and we have to find the center of the ram, and that is where the tone mark is placed. Next example, base word, tone mark. Is there any head or whisker? No. Second rule now applies. Where is the ram? There it is. That is where the tone mark is placed. Next. Base word, tone mark. First question. Do we have any head or whisker? No, we don't. Second rule now applies. Where is the ram? Where is the center of the ram? That is where the tone mark should be placed. First question, do we have any head or whisker? Yes, we do. That is where the tone mark will be placed. So the second word is not even considered when you have a vowel with a head or a whisker. Next, do we have a head or a whisker? No. Second rule applies. Where is the ram? There it is. Where is the center of the ram? Uh-oh. The center of the ram falls in a space. What do we do now? We have two vowels equally distanced from the center of the ram. In this case, we just have to choose the first one. Because we read from left to right, the first one refers to the one to the left. And that is where the tone mark should be placed. Next example. Do we have any head or whisker? No. Then where is the ram? Where is the center of the ram? Same thing, it's on the space, so we have to choose the one that is closest to this center of the ram. And if they are two equally qualified, we just have to choose the first one, which is the letter O to the left. Next, in this case, we don't have head or whisker, so the second rule applies. Where is the ram? There it is. Where is the center of the ram? Do we put the tone mark here on the letter N? No, because the letter N is not a vowel. We have to find the vowel closest to the center of the ram. So the vowel that is closest to the center of the ram is the letter A. And we have to put the, ram, the tone mark there. In this example, is there any head to whisker? No, second rule now applies. Where is the ram? In this case, we do not have any starting consonant. That is, the onset is missing. That makes the whole thing the ram. 
So now where is the center of the ram? And it is a vowel, so we should put the tone mark there. In this case, do we have um, any head to whisker? Yes, we do. That's where the tone mark will be placed, with no consideration for the second rule. In this case, no head, no whisker. Second rule applies. Where is the ram? Where is the center of the ram? Because it's a space, choose the first vowel, and that would be the letter U. So at this point, let's look at another word that also contains UA, and let's see if um, there's any difference. In this case, we do have UA in the word, but the U is preceded by Q. Whenever Q and U are together, it is the compound consonant QUA. And because the U is part of the compound consonant, the RAM starts after the letter U, not including the letter U. In this case, only the letter A is part of the RAM, and thus the letter A has to bear the tone mark. Next one, Q and U together compounds consonant QUA. Where is the RAM? The RAM starts after the letter U, not including the letter U. Where is the center of the ram? A space, but we can easily find um, the vowel that is closest to the center, and that's the letter A. In this example, G and I are together. Always, always the compound consonant Z that makes the letter O, um, the ram, and the letter O will bear the tone mark. In this example, G and I are together, which means compound consonant Z. Do we have any head to whisker? Yes, we do, but we don't have one, we have two. Thus, the second rule now applies. Where is the, the ram? The ram starts after the letter I, not including the letter I. Where is the center of this ram? A space, but we can easily find a vowel closest to the center of this ram, and that is the letter U, and that is where the tone mark should be placed. In this case, G and I together would make the compound consonant Z, leaving the letter A as, as the ram, and the letter A will be as the tone mark. In this case, um, there are two possibilities. If we mean to say Za, then we should put the tone on the letter A because that is the only letter um, in the ram. If we meant to say Z, the ram now has two letters and we have to consider the rule of tone mark placement. Is there any head to whisker? No. Now we have to consider the center of the ram and find um, the first vowel closest to the center of this ram, and that is the letter I. So in this case, even though the letter I is preceded by the letter G, it is also the part of ram E, and therefore it can bear the tone mark. The word to the left is Z. The word to the right is Z. Now let's move on to look at some common misusage of the words. There are so many errors that I've seen on the internet, and I think it all came down to three common causes. The first common cause is we forgot the first rule. We are so eager to apply the symmetry to the RAM that we forgot that before the symmetry takes effect, we have to ask ourselves the first question, is there any vowel already with existing diacritic mark? The second common cause is we misunderstand the rule. Instead of um, center of the ram, we misunderstood it into center of the word. And now the third common cause is when we lack some key concepts and we don't even know where the ram is. So let's talk about these three um, common causes. The first cause Please remember that there are two rules in the symmetry approach. And before we apply the symmetry um, principle, 
we have to make sure to follow the first precedent, which is on the vowel with diacritic mark. If we have a vowel with a diacritic mark, that vowel takes the first precedence regardless of its position in the RAM. Let's look at some examples here. In these six examples, you can see that each word contains one vowel with either a head or a whisker. I will underline the rams for you to see. In the first three examples, the letter with a head or a whisker resides at the start of the ram. In the fourth example, the letter with a head stays right in the middle of the ram. In the fifth example, the letter with a head is kind of toward the end of the ram. And in the last example, the vowel with the head is at the very end of the ram. But regardless of where it is in the ram, as long as it is a vowel with either a head or a whisker, the tone mark should be placed there. Let's go to the second um, cause of error. Most of the times when we forget and we just remember the root is about center of something, it is easy to misunderstand the stand center of the ram for center of the word because sometimes the first vowel closest to the center of the ram happens to be at the center of the word. Let me give you a few examples. In these three examples, you can see that the, the tone mark is placed right in the middle of the word. But that's not what the rule says. The rule says the center of the ram. If I underline the ram for you to see, the tone mark is placed on the first vowel closest to the center of the ram. In this case, the center of the ram just happens to be a space, and that is why we count on the vowel to the left, and it happens to be the center of the word. But very often, the center of the word is not the center of the ram. Let's look at these two cases. Which one is correct? The first case it's put at the center of the word. It's not correct because if you look at the ram, the center of this ram is the letter A and the letter A should bear the tone mark, not the letter O. The root is about the center of the ram, not the center of the word. I'd like to point out that the center of the ram does not move with word length. Let's look at these um, three examples. In these three words, um, the word is getting longer and longer as we go down. But these three words have exactly the same ram, E. Let's look at another example. These three words get longer and longer as we go down. But these three also contain exactly the same ram, one. Because the ram is the same, the center of the ram is the same, and so the tone mark is consistently placed on the center of the ram, even though the center of the word might move um, depending on the word length. So please remember, center of the ram, not center of the word. Let's talk about the last common cause of error, and this is the lack of a key concept where we don't even know where the ram is. Usually it is very simple to find the ram because after the starting consonant, everything else basically is the ram. But in the case of QU and GI, please remember that the letter U and the letter I belongs to the onset. Because they are part of the compound consonant, they are not part of the ram. Let's look at these examples for the compound consonant. Well, where is the ram? The ram starts after the letter U, not including the letter U. And because the ram is the letter A, not the letter U, the second case is incorrect because we put the tone mark on the starting consonant. Let's look at another example. Where is the ram? The ram starts after the letter U, not with the letter U. And therefore, the second case is not correct because the tone mark is not on the ram. Similarly, whenever you see G and I together, it is the compound consonant Z. So where is the ram? 
the rhyme will start after the letter I, not with the letter I, in most cases. So in this pair, the word is zu. The first case is correct because in the second case, um, the tone mark is not on the rhyme. All of the cases of Q, U, and G, I, the rhyme starts after the letter U and after the letter I. But just keep in mind that in Vietnamese, there are three cases where the letter I in G, I bears the tone mark. And that is because the letter I in these three cases um, has dual functions, part of the compound consonant Z and also part of the rhyme. So I hope that clears up some um, confusion. Um, before we move on to the next topic, I'd like to point out some invalid criticism of the symmetry approach. In this example, um, the author of this article claimed that the symmetry approach is not consistent because if we take symmetry into consideration, why this way and not that way? Let me put the two columns together so you can see. Let's look at the first case. The first um, column is correct because the letter E takes precedence. It is the vowel with the whisker. So it takes the precedence on tone mark placement even before the symmetry is considered. So in this case, the author uh, forgot that there was the first rule and rush into applying the second rule. Let's look at the last row. Very similar to the first row. The word has a letter A, which is um, a vowel with a hit. So that vowel takes precedence for the tone mark placement even before the symmetry consideration takes place. Let's look at the middle two. I think the author of this article uh, misunderstood the rule to be the center of the word, because in this case, we can easily um, tell that the first column is correct because the tone mark is placed at the center of the ram. The second column is not correct because it is placed at the center of the word. And the root is about the symmetry um, of the ram, not of the word. So now let's um, look at some awkward elaboration of the root. Um, when I did research on the rules of tone mark placement, I was terrified to see how many very complex elaborations of the rule out there. Let me give you an example. In this example, the principle of center of the ram is elaborated into um, several rules. The first rule is if the ram has two vowels, place the tone mark on the first vowel. That is the center of the ram. If the ram has three vowels, place the tone mark on the second vowel. That's the center of the ram too. If the ram has u -e combinations, place the tone mark on the letter e. If you look at all of the words with u -e combination, the letter O uh, always stays either at the center of the ram or the closest to the center of the ram. And then in case of Q, U, and G, I, place the tone mark on the next vowel. And then that statement has three exceptions, and that is Z, Z, Z. If you think about it, and if you know that Q, U, and G, I are compound consonants, and if you know about the double I conventions, once you figure out on where the RAM is, the rule of tone mark placement applies consistently throughout. So in essence, um, even this rule point to the, the same principle, center of the RAM. So all of these um, elaborated rules are not wrong. They are just very hard to remember and very hard to apply because it's just lengthy and awkward. But it's not as scary as the next example that I'm going to show you. Instead of saying center of the ram, the principle is elaborated like this. If the ram has two vowels and does not end with a consonant, place a tone mark on the vowel next to the last vowel. If you think about that, it is the center of the ram. 
If the rhyme ends with a consonant or compound consonant, place the tone mark on the last vowel. If you think about it, also the vowel at the center of the rhyme. In case of QU or GI, place the tone mark on the next vowel with three exceptions. If you think about it, it's also the center of the rhyme. If the rhyme has the U combinations, place the tone mark on U, that is also center of the rhymes. Instead, I would highly recommend to stay with the principle that is the vowel closest to the center of the rhyme, and that would be much easier to remember without having to memorize all of the awkward elaborations of the vowel, even though I have to say such elaborations are not wrong. Let's move on to touch on the typography of the tone mark on the letter I. When you place a tone mark on the letter I, keep the dot. What I mean is, the tone mark is meant to be placed on top of the dot of the letter I, not to replace it. This is the correct placement of the tone mark on the letter I, on top of the dot. Unfortunately, all of the typical type fonts that I found replace the dot of the letter I like this. This is not the Vietnamese way. Keep this in mind because when you write um, like handwriting, you really should keep the letter I and put the tone mark on top of the dot, not in place of the dot. Now, this is the part that I fear the most the other rules of tone mark placement. There are at least three existing approaches when it comes to the Vietnamese tone mark placement. At least all of the approaches agree on the first principle, and that is the tone mark should be placed on the variation vowel with diacritic mark. But after this rule, the second rule starts to differ. The rule that we've talked about today is referred to as an old approach because there is a new approach, but there is also an older approach. In the older approach, before the center of the ram is taken into consideration, there is another precedence on the letter E. With the new approach, the tone mark should be placed on the main phoneme or the dominant vowel. So instead of a visual assessment to get the center of the ram, now you have to learn phonetics to know which vowel is the dominant vowel. The difference between the three existing approaches would come down to the three rams, wa, we, and ui. And we can talk more about these approaches in our next discussion. In conclusion, the symmetry approach is very simple. The first rule, put the tone mark on the vowel with a head or a whisker. And then the second rule, put the tone mark on the vowel closest to the center of the ram. The symmetry approach has no exception. Once you can figure out um, where your ram is, the root of the tone mark placement according to the symmetry approach is consistent throughout. The symmetry approach, however, is considered an old approach, and there are newer rules endorsed by the government at this point, and we will discuss the new rules in our next discussion. That's all I have for today, and with that, have a good day.